Mm. Now, don't forget, uh, if you take this off, see, this can be reused now. Uh, when it in the freezer, if you put it on the top of a white wine, the white wine comes out at about 45 degrees. If you put this in the refrigerator, if you put it on a red wine, it comes out about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can be used for reds or whites depending upon where you put the refrigerant. So if the refrigerant's in the freezer, it's perfect for whites. If you put it in the refrigerator, it's perfect for reds. A beautiful little device. Probably it'll last for 20 years and very, very versatile. Uh, you just keep it stored there, and then when you're ready to enjoy your wine, you just take it out, slip it right on the top of the bottle. So, enjoy that one. Then don't forget, if you have a wine like this where there's a lot of air, you put your vacuum save up on the top, you put your handy dandy pump like this, and now basically you just suck all the air out of it, and when it starts getting tough to pump, you've got a beautiful vacuum, you take the wine, you put it in the refrigerator, keep it standing up, don't lay it down. The only reason why you lay wine down is to keep the cork wet. Well, there's no cork, so you don't need to keep anything wet. Now we're going to go on to our next wine, which is our Pinot Noir. And I'll tell you, when we were in Europe, in Portugal, they were most shocked at our Rieslings, our Pinots, and our, um, re, uh, our, our port, our port, Riesling, and Pinot. Those three wines, they were amazed at because, you know, they're thinking, how does Texas do Pinot, you know? Well, Texas can do great Pinot. We're going to show you now the new Messina Hoff screw pull, which, again, if you have any concern about using an opener like this, use this, because if you screw this up, you need, a, you need help. You need a lot of help. Uh, you just put this over the top. Again, go right through the wax. You just push down a little bit, and you just put the little handle on top. And then all you do is turn it clockwise. And it lifts the cork straight out. You never have to worry about the cork breaking. I mean, the uh, auger itself is Teflon coated. The auger is uh, a deep auger. I mean, you can see the difference between these two augers. This one is just deep enough to get through on the, uh, on the first uh, um, little uh, edge of it, whereas this is twice, maybe three times deeper. So it does a fabulous job. Again, these last 20 years, so it's well worth the investment to get one. This is a beautiful little device. It's a, a, a metallic foil. You roll it up. You put it inside the bottle. Now when you have this beautiful dinner on your white tablecloth, you never have to worry about it spilling all over the tablecloth because it creates a hard edge. And it does a beautiful job. See, there's no drip. There's nothing. It's a, it's a nice little device. When you're done using it, you take it, you put it in the dishwasher, and it cleans up beautifully. Um, this is the Pinot. It's the 2008 Pinot. Uh, the beauty of Pinot Noir is that it has this kind of uh, deep uh, grape, uh, uh, kind of red, uh, maroon color. Uh, it has a beautiful aroma of earth, earth, uh, of mushroom, of, uh, of leather, like a nice leather jacket that you've had a long, long time. Uh, one, one person once described a, a beautiful Pinot is like sitting on a horse and smelling the horse and the saddle simultaneously. Now, being a kid from the Bronx, it's hard for me to recognize sitting on a saddle with a sweaty horse. I mean, that's not exactly what I did. I bet on a bunch of those, but I, you know, I can't say I've been on them a whole bunch. But, uh, but it does have that kind of earthy characteristic. So you swirl it, smell, 
beautiful aroma, kind of a beautiful color, beautiful with lamb, uh, great with veal, nice with pasta, uh, and it works on fish. It, this is a great salmon wine, especially if you grill the salmon, because uh, you pick up some of the uh, grill smell uh, out of the wine itself, so it kind of creates that bridge with the salmon. So let's taste it now. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. You know, the beauty of Pinot is that it's extremely sophisticated wine. Uh, but a novice would love this wine because it doesn't have the kind of tannins that you get, that cheek pull tannin that you typically get from a cat. So it's not offensive to their mouth when they're first enjoying it. And so Pinot is actually a wine that works really well on the sophisticated wine drinker and the wine drinker that's new to red wine. Uh, a beautiful wine. I believe that you should drink Pinots within five, maybe seven or eight years. I don't think that they are as long-lasting in terms of uh, color. I think they tend to lose some of their beautiful color after about eight years. So I like to drink my Pinots about five to eight years max. This Pinot, uh, you know, here we are, it's a three-year-old Pinot. It is tasting beautifully and uh, it will continue to taste beautifully for at least another five years. Uh, my belief is Pinot Noir is meant to consume a little younger than a Zin, a Cab, uh, and even a little bit sooner than a Merlot. I think Merlot is one of those wines that also should be consumed a little bit younger. Beautiful wine, salute. Now I do want to also tell you about a great program we've got here. It's called TGI Wine uh, Thursday, and, and we do this uh, on March the 24th, it's between 6 and 9 p.m. in the wine bar, where I am now, and we do 20 premium Messina Hof wines. I mean, we bring out the Paolos, the Private Reserves, the Single Vineyards, the Late Harvest. We bring out the best of our wines, and what's amazing, it's $25 if you book it in advance, and if you do it at the door, it's only $30. And we have cheese, we have great music, beautiful environment, 20 great Messina Hof wines. You can taste them all if you want, uh, but it's just an amazing experience. You know, one of the things that people ask me all the time is, I really don't know what I like. Well, you know how you find out what you like? By tasting it. And once you do, and my recommendation is you get yourself a small book, and we even sell them here. They're called wine logs. And what you do is anytime you taste the wine, you put down your date, you put down the wine, and you put down what you thought of it. And after a while, you start understanding where, what you like. Do you like sweet? Do you like dry? Do you like white? Do you like red? But you get to find out what you like. And then, when you go to the store, with confidence, you can walk up to the wine that you know you like, and you can purchase it. It doesn't become a grab bag every time you go to the uh, wine section and hope to God you find one that you like. You may as well come to tastings like this and figure out what is the style of wine that you like, and then you can enjoy that particular style of wine. And then, as you mature in your wine knowledge and your wine education, you will find that the amount of wines, the type of wines that you like will broaden. Uh, wine appreciators start off with a narrow uh, direction of what wines they like, but as they become more familiar with wines, they start diversifying and they start appreciating a, a larger array of wines. So, Pinot Noir, Great entry wine for uh, new wine drinkers to red, uh, and uh, we'll certainly be serving one of the Pinots at that uh, event on March the 24th. Now we're going to taste our last wine, and this is 
the a very special wine. This is from a dear friend of ours, uh, Granite Hill Vineyard in in just outside of Fredericksburg. From our new location in Fredericksburg, which is four miles to the west of Stonewall and five miles to the east of Fredericksburg, uh, Granite Hill is about ten miles from the new winery. And Steve Johnson and his lovely wife, Joy, have a beautiful 40-acre vineyard there that's been planted since the 80s, producing extraordinary wine. Uh, Steve is a native of Houston, moved out to the hill country, uh, does an absolutely fabulous job with the vineyard. And this is the beginning of what we call terroir expression. The Sophia Marie expresses the ground, the earth, the vineyard of Messina here in Bryan. The Merrill's Vineyard expresses the dirt, the vineyard, the climate of halfway Texas. Well, this wine expresses the terroir, the dirt, the climate, the vineyard of Fredericksburg. And it's a, we make two of them. We make a Cabernet Sauvignon and we make a Merlot and they're both extraordinary. And keep in mind, we take the screw pull, we get it started, we turn it in a clockwise direction, it lifts the cork out beautifully, and we pour. I'm gonna steal the uh, foil and pour it over here, because we're not gonna make any more of a mess than I've already made. And we pour it. Now look at the color on that wine. My God, it's beautiful. Deep, dark. Garnet, beautiful label, dear friend of ours, uh, uh, Betty Bogner did this label, oh, I'm going to say 20 years ago, and it was gorgeous. What she did is she painted some cactus that's located on this property, and it was in full bloom with these beautiful reds and pinks and blues, just a gorgeous cactus uh, painting, and we thought it would be perfect because, see, the cactus that is so characteristic of this property. And so these wines are so characteristic of these vineyards. So I, we thought it was a perfect match. Uh, let's wake up the nose, beautiful. We swirl, it's always nice to swirl on the table. This way you don't spill it all over yourself. Right nostril is now 90%, the left one's 10%. And we smell again, beautiful wine. I mean, it, it, this wine, it smells like cherries. It smells like Bing cherries. I mean, dark, ripe Bing cherries. And just a gorgeous smell, clean. It's got a lovely uh, oak aroma. Keep in mind, these wines had brand new French oak and brand new American oak. Wow. You know, in the movie Sideways, our gentleman really bad-mouthed Merlot. He called them wimpy. This is not a wimpy wine. This wine is as big and as bold as any Bordeaux wine. This wine actually is blended with 20% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from the same vineyard. So it's a blend of 80% Merlot, 20% Cabernet Sauvignon from Granite Hill. All the grapes that went into this bottle of wine came from that 40-acre vineyard. Just a beautiful vineyard, beautiful people, beautiful terroir, and a beautiful wine. You know, I think wine expresses the joy and the efforts of the people that go into it. And when you have the Johnsons caring for that vineyard as, as much as they do, and, and how we care for the grapes once they get to the winery, uh, this was a very, very special year. Um, Merrill and I had the opportunity of staying with the Johnsons when we were picking it. So we took a, uh, our truck, our box truck, to the, the Johnsons, stayed with them, and then that we picked the grapes right into the box truck and I drove the grapes back to the winery. 
uh, never knowing it was going to be, these were going to be so that good. I mean, my God, this is the best Merlot that we've ever gotten from that vineyard. And I feel really good about the fact that Merle and I look like the Beverly Hillbillies coming back from the vineyard. So uh, not only did we have a great time with the Johnsons, but we also had a great time driving the... Uh, uh, the uh, grapes back. You know, it's really power empowering when you are in a box truck driving down the highway, you know, and you kind of feel like you're really a truck driver, you know, it's really kind of a neat, uh, a neat experience. So, we smell again. Mm. Oh boy, I mean, I'm saying right now, I want prime rib. I want a, I want a beautiful piece of beef. I want it nice and, uh, and, and, and well grilled, or I want a nice uh, pasta with some sausage, some sausage, uh, you know, I, I, or lamb, a nice rack of lamb, you know, something big, big and flavorful. Uh, great, lovely wine. Last thing that I want to mention to you is the Wine and Roses Festival, April the 23rd. Please mark it on your calendar. It's going to be a big festival. It's a gorgeous time of the year. We have the World Grape Stomping Championship, so you need to form teams of four people. Come on up here, sign up in advance. I want you to make up a fabulous name. I want you to go to CC Creations and get yourself a great t-shirt. Bring the t-shirt over here and show how good you can stomp grapes because it's, it's a blast. It's an absolute riot. Um, and then we have a spring release dinner that night where we debut all the new releases that we're coming out with. And we're going to have a beautiful group. We're going to have the first ever uh, single vineyard Primitivo. We're going to be releasing that. We're also going to be releasing some additional single vineyard uh, wines that are going to be coming out. We're going to be doing uh, the 2010 uh, barrel sampling. You know, we have a brand new barrel room in the back over there with gorgeous barrels. We just bought 200 brand new barrels from World Cooperage. And I'll tell you one thing, those are the most beautiful barrels. And we learned something interesting from Portugal. See, in France, what they do is they, they uh, stain the mid-belly of the barrel with uh, grape stain. They actually take the grape juice that comes off of the bottom of the tank and they put it on a cloth and rub it on the wood. Well, we've done that for the last three or four years. But this year what they did is in Portugal is they take that dark or that kind of reddish stain and they paint it around the head of the barrel. So the heads of the barrels have this beautiful outline of red on the head. And then World Cooperage this year did us a great job of, um, of impressing the Messina Hof logo in the middle of the head. So these barrels are absolutely gorgeous. And our guys here in production have done a fabulous job preparing the barrels. We've already started filling the barrels. The aroma that's coming out of this wood is unbelievable. Three years of air drying in the yard in Independence, Missouri on trees that were grown all the way up in Minnesota. I mean, just a wonderful uh, expression of American oak, French oak from Limousin, from the heart of France. Uh, that's what we're using for these uh, wonderful wines. So I'd like to say it was great visiting with you again. We look forward to seeing you uh, again at our next uh, show. And God bless. Keep drinking and enjoy. Salute.